Hey everybody, welcome to module number eight. This is our last module. This is our last week together. It is amazing that the time has flown by so quickly. Uh, I, it is so hard to, to believe that we're already here, uh, but it is our last week. We don't want to let up. We're going to keep the pedal down and we're going to go straight into this week. Let's see what we got going on. Uh, so the title of this module is Making Your Arguments Count, and that is really what we want to accomplish here because it's one thing to join a conversation. It's one thing to add in your own thoughts, right? Like, here's what I believe. But they have to be believable. They have to be things that really make sense. That when you provide your explanation and justification, that they really matter, that they are legitimate, that they are uh, uh, viable options, that they do make sense, they're logical and rational, and, and, and they really help your argument, right? And so that's really what we're looking at here, is making sure that the things that we say actually accomplish the purpose of what we're trying to do. And then that is the end, the capstone of all this stuff that we are doing, uh, because we have this, we have an argument, we're backing it up, we've made that claim, we're backing up that claim, and now we're making sure that the argument makes sense and really moves our audience. So we have our learning materials and uh, assignments for this week, and our course objectives. And then we're going to look at our first big piece. And this is something that you really want to do right off the bat. Um, so last week or last module, the end of module seven, you posted your half draft, right? Like the part that you have done, uh, you posted that onto the discussion board. So what you're going to do before Wednesday is that you are going to go on there and you are going to review at least two other of your classmates papers okay now the reason we're doing this so early obviously is because the final draft is due this week and so in order for us to offer some meaningful feedback that is actionable and and that that uh, the writer can utilize to improve their paper they need to have that with plenty of time to do that so you really want to get onto this one quickly the deadline is wednesday and what you're going to do is you're going to read through you know, it, it, by the way, it does say that uh, in the instructions, it says that your instructor might have put you in small groups that did not happen, right? That we have a small class. Uh, when I have a larger class, then I'll put people into groups, but that's not the case this time. And so what you want to do is you want to go through several papers. Uh, it would be beneficial to look through multiple papers, but you're going to pick at least two. OK, and then when you come down to those two, you're going to read it. And I really suggest that you read it first before you make any kind of comments and then come back and look at these five points here. So do they make a clear point? Do they very clearly say this is the position and this is why? Like, do they really make that clear? Appropriate, accessible support, the 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 evidence that was provided. Does it really back up that claim? Does it really back up that position? The reasoning and the explanations, do they take that information? Do they explain it? Do they give you the context and the meaning and the whatever to help help that material support their initial claim, which was their clear point that they made in the very beginning? Organization. So as you look at the paper as a whole, was it organized in a way that really helped you get through the argument, right? Like, did it very clearly define the problem? Did it very clearly explain what the issue was? Does it provide evidence in an appropriate order that helps you get to that point, right? And, and then does it wrap everything up? And if you look at that, you know, you think about how best to really get to that point of that argument. Does the organization support the claim that they're doing, support the work that they're doing there? And then the last piece is the one important specific change. Uh, I really think that the benefit of this, so, so one, two, three, four, those are reactions. Those are feedbacks of a reader, right? Like when somebody reads something, those are the kinds of things that they're thinking when they read those. Uh, number four, Number five is kind of that like, hey, here's what I might do, right? Like, here's something that I think you should do to improve your paper before you turn in your final draft. Um, two things about the peer reviews, and I've said this before, but I repeat it again. You know, it really, I think, is beneficial because you get feedback from people who are reading, but you also get feedback from people who are doing the same thing, right? And, and so they have a, a understanding of what you're trying to do, and they can help you understand, did I or did I not? 
accomplish the task at hand. I also really like to think that this is beneficial to you as a writer because you get to see how other people do things. And it's like, well, they did it this way or they did it this way. Maybe I should try that. Or that didn't work for me. Why not? And that may be something that I want to avoid. So I really think that both the reader and the writer get a lot out of this assignment. Again, we are looking for at least two and we are looking for meaningful feedback that really helps the writer improve. Don't just say it was organized well. You know, think about why it was organized or what about that organization helped you or are there suggestions that you would make for organization or any of those points, right? So it is really about what you can do to help that person improve their paper. Um, and then we have the instructions again for the final argument. Uh, you know, this is, you know, that we've, we've already looked at this a couple times. Uh, I just like to reiterate the fact that I will be looking for things such as no first person, right? There's no I, no me, no we, no our, things like that. Those are way too casual and they take away from the argument, right? Uh, I think it's very important that you have a very clear thesis statement and that the rest of the paper backs that up, right? Like you really kind of prove your point. You say, here's the problem, here's the here's the issue, here's what we can do to fix it, here's why this is a problem, and you really back up those claims that you have. Uh, I really think that arrangement is very important because it's building a case, right? And, and you think like, do I just throw the bombshell out there and then keep backing up with some smaller stuff? Or do I work my audience up? Do I give them here and give them here and give them here and give them here and I'm steadily building up to a big piece, right? No matter which one you're using, depending on your topic and the information that you have, it's all about that reasoning. It's all about getting that audience to that point where they're really buying into what you say. Don't forget that this does have to be an APA or MLA style. Either one is fine, doesn't matter as long as you use one consistently. I know that off and on during some of the assignments earlier this year, you may or not have had to be as clear about some of your in-text citations. You do have to have them in these, okay, because you're using a variety of texts. Um, and so you do need to make sure that you're very clear about that. Now, I know people have asked before about, like, if I have five sentences here that I've I've brought some piece of information in from the text. I paraphrase some different information. Do I have to cite each sentence? No. You cite at the end of integrated material. Now, the difference to that would be if you have like something from page one and then page eight and then page 10, then you want to have some transition because you got to fill in some blanks in between those, right? So at the end of a chunk of integrated material, that's when you're going to do the citations. Uh, don't forget the period goes after. There's not a period before the parenthesis but there is one afterwards. And as a kind of uh, help, when you go to your uh, reference page or your MLA works cited page, the thing that goes in that in-text citation is going to be what's first on that line, right? If it's an author's last name, you use the author's last name. If it's a title, you can use the title. If it needs to be a short version of it, that's fine. Um, I do always like to remind people that are using citation generators, especially my bib, uh, to double check your citations because uh, sometimes they're all automated. They just go read the metadata on the back of, uh, of a website. Uh, it may or may not be reading it accurately, especially my bib will sometimes try to use like the publisher or the organization as the author an author on your citation must be a human. So it can't be like CNN and then the title and then the publisher and date and all that. Uh, if it's not a human or a person, then it cannot be the author, right? So just kind of double check those citations if you're using a generator because they're nice and they're handy and they do great work, but they're not always perfect. Uh, don't forget that your final draft, APA or MLA style, is going to be somewhere in that 1200 word range, okay? It's going to be documented, it's going to be well-researched, and it's going to really back up the claim that you start off with. Also this week, you have a reflection essay. Um, this is this is your final, okay? This technically is the final exam for the class. Um, this asks you to look back over your eight weeks and to kind of think about where you're at. Where did you start? How did you end? Where do you think you picked up some things? How do you think you can use this in the future? Um, so what it asks you to do is identify one of the course objectives from this course. 
Okay, so identify at least one from the course. Here they all are listed right here. Okay, and which one do you think was the most useful to you this semester? Um, make sure that you're very clear. Don't just say, you know, like number four, analyzing synthesizing research information was really helpful. You got to explain why. What did you do? How did it help you? Where do you think you improved or where do you still need to be working, right? Uh, and then secondly, you respond to at least one of the following questions about the writing techniques we had in class. All right. And so you pick <coughs> to at least one. Now, the expectation is one. And if you just do one and it's well written and well explained, that's great. If you kind of want to like work on one and then kind of hit touch on a couple others, that's fine, too. OK, uh, but those are two pieces of the final uh, of this final reflection. Uh, Please make sure that uh, these are written out. I'm not looking for a number and an answer and a number and an answer. You don't need to answer all of those, right? Um, I'm not looking for that. This is written out. The big thing I like to always uh, remind people is that this piece stands on its own. And I know I've said this before in this class. I'm not going to call you up asking you, like, what did you mean by this? Or what was this about, right? This stands on its own. So when you make that claim, when you say this is what the learning objective that I really thought was helpful, explain the why, right? When you look at one of those questions in the second part, this is the thing that I I uh, uh, that I really developed. Why? How? Where are you at? And where do you still think you need to go? Uh, then we turn in the researched argument. Now, this is essay. This is the writing project number. Um, this is that, that the argument paper that we've been writing. So this is your writing project number three. OK, uh, and this is where you submit the final draft. As always, if you have any questions at all, uh, you're not sure if it's submitted or you're having problems getting it submitted, please make sure that you reach out. Uh, just as a reminder, and I know I've talked to a couple of people about this, please make sure you're not using pages as the file that you submit okay it does need to be in a document that i can open up and edit i do not use a macintosh so i cannot open page pages files okay we then have a course survey <coughs> or course evaluation um, it asks you to enter in the course name and you will have to fill in ENGL 111, okay, uh, which is the course title of what this class is. Uh, you don't need to include the section 21P or anything like that. Uh, the course title is going to be enough. And then that will take you into the survey and allow you to uh, answer those questions, okay? Um, there might also be a survey that you have received separately, either through Ivy Learn or through your email that asks you to evaluate me as your instructor. OK, um, and if you do get that invitation, please, uh, you know, we ask that you do that one as well in both cases. Um, the school is looking for honest feedback, is looking for you to provide uh, your honest impressions. OK, to be honest. Uh, it doesn't, uh, this isn't an attempt to find out who were the best people or the worst people. Uh, this is not a place where you need to lie and, and act a certain way. The school really wants you to be honest and they want your honest feedback, okay? Uh, in either case, the course or the instructor survey, if you get that one as well, um, there is, I, I, know, I do not receive that direct information, okay? So what will happen is the college will take that information, they will digest it, uh, I will get an aggregate report, uh, especially the parts that are relevant to me or specific about me. Uh, there might be some things that they pull out specifically, like students say this, and they might paraphrase it. Uh, sometimes I get a direct quote if it's like really important for me to see that. Uh, these things are taken seriously by the college, okay? Uh, but I don't get any kind of direct information that I can tell who was saying what, okay? So please take your time uh, in doing these. Please be honest in your feedback. Uh, we both, the college and I, uh, do appreciate that because this does inform how we shape the class moving forward. And once you've done that, you are done. That is it. Um God, I hope that at the end of this, that you feel like you've really picked up a lot of skills. Uh, this idea of argument is something you're going to do for the rest of your college career. You're going to use it in your professional career. So I really hope that you got a lot out of that. If there is anything that you need from us, please make sure that you are reaching out. Uh, I also do like to remind people to check your grades before the end of this course. 
um, before the last date, which is Sunday. Uh, please do that in advance. Once I finalize the grades, I cannot change them by myself. Uh, it's a process that has to go through and some different signatures. It's not, not that I don't want to do it, but it does take a little bit of extra time. And especially if you need like this grade so that you can take like another class or something, um, it's always beneficial for you to know that your grades are correct before the class ends. I can change things. <coughs> excuse me. I can change things easily on my own before the end of the class. I will gladly change things afterwards, but it just takes a little bit of extra time. Guys, I want to thank you for everything that you have done this uh, this semester. Uh, you guys have really shown a lot of great work. You guys have really progressed. So many of you were on task and staying up to date with all the work. That was amazing. I know, you know, it's it's a busy time. There's so many distractions. I know it could have been very easy to get off track, and so many of you did not. And so that really shows a lot about you. Uh, I am glad that I got to take part of this journey with you, and I wish you luck in your future.